Hey, welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to cover setting up and getting started with ChatTD, which is a handy operator that connects with a few different LLM services, a variety of models, including running locally and using images directly from the network. I will walk you through all of the basics from setting it up in your project, grabbing API keys, and more of an introduction to the operator and its functionality and UI hopefully presenting it in a way that you can think about how it might be helpful or interesting to experiment with inside of your own touch designer projects. So to load it in to your project, you're going to want to drag the tox file from on disk into the network. If you haven't set up the Python stuff, the Python VENV parameter in the config page, you're going to get this OpenAI setup pop up page. And it's going to say quick setup for OpenAI Python library. Setup install. This button down here will select a folder and install the additional Python requirements. You will need Python 3.11. And if you don't have that installed, you can click right here. This will open a website. You will want to select the recommended Windows installer for 64 bit and just click that and then follow the Python installation requirements. If you want to get that install pop up page again, you can just go to the config page and hit install OpenAI. This will bring that back up. If you do have Python 3.11, which I do have, you are just going to hit the setup and install button. This will bring a folder selection menu and you can go to any folder on disk where the virtual environment is going to live. And then once you do that, you're gonna notice that Touch Designer project freezes as it is building the virtual environment. Um, this should just take a moment. You might get this not responding as the libraries install. If for some reason there's something going wrong with the installation and you get some red text here, you can hit this X and stop it and you'll get back to your project. But usually the pip install process should work. And then once it's done, you'll get this installation complete pop up. It's going to say first use may freeze the project briefly. That's as the project is importing the new libraries. But the Python VENV parameter in the config is now set to your virtual environment. And to use this operator in other projects later, just save this operator to disk or to the, in your palette with that parameter set. So you're going to hit OK, and you're going to notice that the project just pauses for a moment. But now you have the chat TD operator. It's going to say open AI library has been imported. The config page, you'll see the folder that I selected there that is set. And now that this is set, you can save this to disk or save it to your palette. Just drag it here, and now you will have that already. But actually, you might want to delete that because it's not quite fully set up yet. Let's generally just go over the operator, and then I'll go over grabbing the API keys and also ways to run it local. So I'll try to go over all of that in this. But the main parameters are in this settings page. This is like the max length and this is in tokens. And then the temperature, which is a parameter for how random the token selection process is. And then I also have this section and I've made it really easy to include images from your touch designer network directly in the chat. You have the system message here, and then you have some pulses that will remove the last message or clear the chat entirely. And then you also have this UI button, which opens the UI. Also some information about the response from the assistant about kind of what you get back and how much money you have used per generation. The conversation parameter page, this has a menu for you to select past conversations. Right now you'll see it says new chat folder. That is because I have not created any chats in this project folder location. It is set as your project folder. Initially, you can, if you want, to save all of your chats across your computer, set this to a different location on disk and it'll save all your chats as you go all in one location across multiple projects. But for now, I just have this at default just being the folder for the project. There's a couple different things to go over with here, but I'll move on. The UI deals with this and you can mess with that, but yeah. Then the config page, you'll see that we have the API slash model selection you can select which different API server you're going to use. We have openrouter.ai, which is a service that routes a bunch of different models through their API, which is nice because you have access to hit update models, 
currently there are 120 models. You'll see all of the new Claude Anthropic models are on here, including this Claude 3 Haiku, which is pretty cheap and also multimodal. Um, we'll get to that in a second. But there's also the OpenAI models, which just have your standard GPT series, including the Vision, which is multimodal, the 3.5, and yeah. Then there's Grok, which is a very fast API service and is currently free. I don't know how much longer that's going to last, but that has three different models that run extremely fast. And then LM Studio, which is local, which I'll show in a sec. And then custom, which would just be any sort of custom URL, which may work with additional services that use any open AI chat API standard. So I'm just going to set it to open router first. You'll see in this API key, it doesn't have that because I'm not going to include API keys for you. We're going to hit this find API key, which will work and send you to different sites for these different ones. But click this. And as you don't have an account, it'll have you sign in and make an account and you can sign in with Google. A lot of these API services are paid open router and open AI grok right now is free LM studio is free because it's local. But these first two, you're going to probably submit some sort of payment information. Once you have that all set up, you're going to want to hit this create key button and then you're going to want to name your key. So I'm going to call this uh, tutorial with open router. You can put a credit limit. So I'm going to make a $1 credit limit. And then now that I have this tutorial key, I'm going to take this key and copy it, bring it directly into touch designer and paste it here. So now that I have my open router API key, I can now activate the UI and create a message and send it and you'll see that it's generating using open router auto keep in mind my system message is pretty generic you are a helpful assistant that can answer questions and help with tasks and it says hello how can i assist you today do you have any questions or tasks you need help with anything interesting in this how do i make a pie crust can you help me find a okay yeah that's not that interesting um you can see that it used the mistral ai mistral medium model, which with open router, this auto best for prompt thing will choose the best model. I rarely ever actually use that setting. Normally I pick a model myself. There's a couple models that say free here. There's actually several, not going to count, but under the model parameter, you'll also see this model search, which is just like a little search bar. So if I search for free, it'll only show the free models. If I was to go back to the UI, you can on this left bar there's these like little x's that pop up for messages you can like delete a message everything is saved in your chats automatically in this chat folder and you can also access it here with the drop down but um it's not going to save every message maybe i'll do that at some point It'd be kind of helpful it does save every response from the bot or the chat which yeah there's only one right now but if I was to then make a new chat and go, what's up, free model, and you'll see I'm using Open Router and the Mistral AI instruct free Mistral, which has a 32,000 context window. See more information here, and that's uh, free and free. These for Open Router, this model info shows the price per million tokens. So all of these are going to show free. But if I was to stop searching for only free models and go to let's go for the most expensive, the older version of the 32K GPT-4, which would be a ridiculous choice to use because the GPT-4 Turbo and Turbo Vision have 128K. But if we were wanting to spend all our money, we could spend $60 for a million input tokens and $120 for a million output tokens. You'll also see just slightly different way to display the price. When you select a model in the UI, it'll show you none out of 200,000. That's going to show you the amount of tokens that this conversation contains out of 200,000, which is the contents length for the model. And then this dollar amount is the amount of money that it costs for the model to generate the full context length, which you probably won't get to, but just keep in mind that if you made Claude 3 generate 200,000 tokens, it would cost $15.
if you were to send in a request of 150,000 tokens, it would cost like probably like $3 because this is showing completion token price, which is this $75 and not the input, which is like the whole conversation other than the message that it sends back. But yeah, just keep all that in mind. And let's go to one of these free models and say, what's up free model? And it says something back. So moving on to using the OpenAI API, the official one, API key is now gone. Now you can hit find API key via the web. I got to verify my phone number. All right, I'm going to do that. So now that we are creating a key, I'm going to call it a uh, TD tutorial again. And I'm just going to go permissions all and create secret key. And again, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it in here. And now you'll see in the turbo preview, uh, you're not a free model. And when I'm just typing in here, I'm doing shift enter, which sends the message automatically only when you have this UI or panel selected. So now we're using turbo preview. Um, you're right. My response might have been misleading. It wasn't really, but anyway, so now we are using OpenAI, which is the official OpenAI service. If we go back to OpenRouter, you'll, you will see that we do have all of the GPT models. Keep that in mind, they're the same price as the OpenAI service, but you can just use them through either. If one isn't working, maybe try the other. And then we'll go to Grok, which if we hit find API key, now we're gonna go all the way to Grok and we're gonna create another one. So, so many, so many tutorial keys today, TD tutorial. And, oh, I spelled that wrong, but that doesn't matter. Now you paste your API key into the API key thing. And now we can see the speed of Grok. Hey, write me a long book. And it's going to come back pretty quick. 0.9 seconds instead of like the OpenAI one was just four seconds long. Another thing that you can do is this stream mode will stream the response back to you. It's especially fun with the Grok models. And then I'm going to, in the settings, let's take this max length and let's turn it up. Let's go the full length. Ah, yeah, sure. And then when I have the stream on, when we hit send, you'll see we're getting a response streaming back to us. And that is long, but it came back quick. Let's save the story by calling it Lily in TD or something. I don't know. Um, but you'll see that that name is now in this dropdown. When you name something, you're essentially like save as in that moment. So these two things are the same. Those are all three of the API services with API keys. You'll notice that these API keys change when I change the service name. And you'll also notice that if you were to select a model here and select a model here, it'll go back to the model that you last selected. And I think that is all I'm gonna cover in this first video. We didn't cover the images, but I'll cover that in another video. So this isn't like 20 minutes long. So for now, dive in and experiment and reach out on Discord if you have any feedback or ideas. Thank you all for your support and thanks for tuning in.